Now, for the latest on the ground, we're joined by Crystal Wells, who's a spokesperson for the International Committee of the Red Cross. She joins us live from Geneva. Welcome to TRT World. Um, Crystal, what is the latest that your teams are experiencing there on the ground? Because it has been a week now. Thank you so much for having me. As you say, it's been more, it's been a week now. Uh, since this devastating disaster and communities are obviously obviously still reeling uh, from the flooding and from the effects of the flooding. The good news is, is that more aid is getting into the area. I can speak on behalf of the International Committee of the Red Cross that we've been dispatching things like medicine, things like food, things like essential household items, uh, supplies like body bags. And we have more colleagues arriving into Derna and to the area, people like forensic specialists, for example, who can work alongside our partner, the Libyan Red Crescent, who have really been on the forefront of this response to deal with the many needs that communities are, are facing. And people obviously need support today. They need things like clean water. We need to make sure that people have access to health care, food hygiene supplies, um, but we're also going to need to look at some of the mid to long term needs as well. Uh, one of them being the risk, for example, of landmines and unexploded ordinances and remnants of war. Mm -hmm. uh, when looking at this disaster, we have to remember that Libya has suffered from decades of conflict and violence. Mm -hmm. And we know that many areas are contaminated by unexploded remnants of war, by unexploded so, ordinances. So, Crystal, and when you have so, sorry to interrupt. Like this, what do you do then? What do your teams do when they've, you know, they're faced with that challenge of uh, unexploded landmines? So we first we need to let we need to do a few things. We need to educate communities about the risk. Um, people need to be reminded that these unexploded ordinances could be lurking in mud, in debris, and the crevices of homes. People need to remember that when they are out and about and digging through the debris of what remains. It's also important for first responders to know this. People who are going through the debris, for example, searching to recover bodies. Uh, and we need to be doing assessments to map areas that are potentially contaminated where some of these unexploded ordinances have shifted to, this will take time. And then it's doing basic things like mapping areas, for example, where these have been found. So it will need to be a multi-stage effort because it's quite complicated. But phase one is to really make sure that people remember that this is a risk mm -hmm. and that people have to take caution when digging through the debris, when first responders are out there trying to recover the dead and other things in, in the destruction that we saw from this disaster. And Crystal, you mentioned uh, your uh, teams are, you're going to be sending forensic teams and still, you know, we're reporting uh, that 10,000 people are still unaccounted for. I'm, one week on, has everyone come to terms or, or just understood the scale, the magnitude of what the, the Libya floods disaster is? I, I think it's going to take time for us to know the full scale in terms of the numbers missing, in terms of the, the real death toll. Uh, to just give you one rather grim example, I had a colleague in Dernan and just over in just about two hours, he counted about 200 bodies washing up along the beach. And this, again, was just in two hours. We had a lot of people sadly washed away uh, in their homes, in their buildings, into the sea. Um, so I think the full scale is going to take time. A focus for the International Committee of the Red Cross, as well as the Libyan Red Crescent, is to do what we can to make sure that bodies are managed uh, with dignity. And when I say this, it means taking basic measures to try and reduce the likelihood that people will go missing forever. So this means things like making sure that bodies are buried in body bags, that they're tagged with what information we have, that they are documented, that any grave sites are mapped for who is in there. Um, and if we, if bodies are not managed in this way and they're managed in a way that's very hurried or haphazard, it really increases the risk that we'll never know what happened to people and we'll never know the true scale of this. So a focus for our teams at least will really be working with these first responders on the ground to try and help do what we can in what is a really complex situation to at least reduce the risk in terms of taking basic measures and the bearing of the dead so that there's some form of record with what we have left.
Crystal, it is really in incredible the, the work that you and your teams do, especially now, as you say, to, to bring the dignity to the people who are missing the bodies and especially those families right now uh, at their wits end. Thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate your time. Good luck to you and your team. Thank you for having me. Take care. Thank you.